الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد in the second hadith narrated Abu Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said water is pure and nothing can make it impure Allahu Ahmed who graded as Sahih wa ghayr and in another hadith narrated Abu Usama al-Bahali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrated uh, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said water cannot be rendered impure by anything except something which changes its smell taste and color Ibn Hajar or Ibn Ibn uh, Mahja reported it and Abu Hatim described it as da'if and in the fourth hadith Al-Bayhaqi narrated water is pure unless anything impure is added which changes its smell, taste and color and in a sahih hadith narrated Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if there's enough water to fill two pots tilla, it carries no impurity another version has it does not become unclean and this was collected in uh, Ibn Khuzayma and Ibn Hiban and Hakam graded it as Sahih in these ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Sahih, Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Water is pure and nothing can make it pure. Letting us know that the origin, the asl of water, is that it is tuhur. Tuhur meaning that it will purify uh, other substances. It can be used to purify things and purify your body. And why is this something that's important for us to understand? Because if we were to use water that is pure or that is just clean, but yet it isn't tahur, meaning it's mixed with something that could be pure. For example, if you made, you had water and you mixed it with juice or you mixed it with Kool-Aid or Vimto or Tang or whatever. It's still a clean substance, but it's not tahur, meaning now you cannot make wudu with it because it's actually changed its substance, even though it's changed its substance with something that's clean. But it's not tahur. Tahur meaning that you can then purify yourself for the prayer. You can purify yourself by making wudu and ghusl with it. Another benefit we gain from these ahadith that we mentioned was that as one of the hadith but it was weak but the scholars they speak about this in their books of fiqh and there's other hadith which substantiate it that there are three osaf or three characteristics of water that we need to be concerned with when it comes to najasa when it comes to impurities Meaning that if something impure mixes with your water, what do you do? So the ulama, they mention from those ahadith that if your substance is changed by any of those three ways, meaning that the, for example, so urine falls into your water you're going to make wudu with, and it changes the color, it changes the smell, or it changes the taste. Any one of those three characteristics, then no longer is that water tuhur, meaning you can no longer make wudu with it or ghusl with it. In the last hadith we mentioned about the qillatain or qullatain, that some ulama from this, even though it was a weak uh, narration from this, some of the Hanabila and perhaps some of the other Fuqaha say that if a if water 
say example you have a large body of water anything which is less than qulatain this is a measure of these maybe possibly huge pots of waters i don't know the exact measurement you would equivalent in kilos or in fluid ounces or what have you but if it is a small body of water then according to many of the scholars then it becomes impure if it's mixed with najasa regardless of changing the one of those characteristics the smell the taste or the the smell the taste or the color those are just some of the benefits with regards to those ahadith and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam.